have another grab bag from which to pull out some goodies. I have eight fragrances that are in this bag, and I'm just going to start chatting about them, sharing them with you. And uh, let's see what will be the first one that I pull out here. Hmm. Okay. Here is Le Dis. Le Dis from Balenciaga. This is a very early release. Um, this is classified as a cheaper floral. It was launched in 1947. Um, the nose is Francis Fabron, and this is something that opens up aldehydic, peachy. We have spices, um, like more green spices like coriander. It's, um, it has these spring florals in it like lilac. I notice a lot of ionones in this, and, um... It makes it feel very plush and uh, velvety violet with some orris and some lily of the valley as you get into the heart from um, from what I recall through the dry down, um, which has this animal sensuality to it. Um, there's vanilla and balsams and some civet. So this is a launch that is at this point 70 over 75 years old and uh, it has long been discontinued by Balenciaga unfortunately they discontinued all of their um, their classics throughout their first uh, several decades um, where they launched perfumes um, and I do believe that had something to do with the changing of hands as far as ownership of the brand and Long story, um, I won't regale you with it, but um, yeah, Le Dis. This is a, a classic um, that is sadly forgotten amongst many classics, and uh, that is unfortunate. Um, so that's my first one, Le Dis from Balenciaga. Next in its box is another one, which is what I consider to be a forgotten classic. This is Antelope by the House of Vale. I'll open this up so I can show you. And I do believe this might be a 70s version, maybe 80s. Uh, I think it's a natural atomizer, but <sighs> look at the detail of the bottle. I love this sort of tortoise shell. If you can see here the tortoise shell effect. I remember there used to be like soap dishes that would have this effect back in the day. It was very much in vogue in the 60s and 70s. So Antelope was released around the same time as Le Dis, 1946, and this is another aldehydic uh, fragrance of the era. Um, aldehydes and citruses uh, drying into some um, herbaceous notes, iris, rose, violet, lily of the valley. I'm noticing a trend here. And the base notes are musky, ambery, and... Um, there, I detect um, some earthy elements like maybe patchouli and vetiver, but it is definitely an uh, aldehydic powerhouse of the 40s, and um, it is ripe for rediscovery. That's whale antelope. Antelope. Okay, and next. Oh, we're going to fast forward a few decades here. This is Max Factor Geminesse. And this was released in 1974. I actually, um, if I reach for one of my, my books over here, I was inspired by Barbara Herman to seek this one out. She does feature it in her book, Sentence Subversion, Decoding a Century of Provocative Perfume. 
which is now out of print but can still be purchased as of the um, as of the date of this video on erisperfumes.com, E-R-I-S-P-A-R-F-U-M-S.com. She does still have some copies um, at a normal price, so you don't need to spend an arm and a leg on eBay for um, an out-of-print book. Um, she does have a few copies available as of this video. So re remember, if you're watching this video far in the future, that may not still be the case, but an excellent book to have in your library. But as far as uh, Geminess itself, this was released in the height of the feminist era of the 70s. And a lot of the fragrances reflected that as they had become more unisex and earthy and outdoorsy, green, sporty. Um, this is a, a leather Shepra Amber. And it is very mossy. It does have your florals like your jasmine, your rose, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, you name it. But this Shepra also in addition to having a fair dose of labdanum and leather in the base, is quite resinous and ambery as well. And I find this to be sort of like a more reserved, not more reserved, more refined rather, um, approach to fragrances like um, uh, Charlie, Revlon Charlie, the classic. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, not discussed much. I hadn't known about it until Barbara Herman uh, illuminated it for me, um, enlightened me. That's Gemini's. Okay, next. Hmm. Mm. Ah, this little one. This is uh, Colors. Colors de Benetton, men. Um, note the box. It's hexagonal. <laughs> and look at this. Isn't this... They wouldn't put nearly that much effort. It's hexagonal shaped as you open it. And here's my little itty bitty bottle. What's the quantity on this? 15.2 milliliters. It's a little baby bottle. Um, this is some great stuff. This was released in 1988. Um, this would be good for fans of, say, Maxime's Porom or maybe uh, Oscar de la Renta Port Louis. It's woody, it's coniferous, it's earthy, it's herbal. There's lavender, sandalwood, cypress, some spices, some carnation. It's just that usual fare, but done just so impeccably in this version. Um, and it's it's a nice one. It's been long out of production, at least in this iteration. I think that there were uh, there was a later version of it that that is quite different. I'll note the the Benetton logo here, on the very top. You see that? very cool so yeah this is a nice little delightful men's fragrance from the late 80s if that is your kind of fare okay. all right well, i already know what this one is because it's not in a box and it's in a very characteristic um very unique bottle um this is actually um the master brand of anthracite for uh, women had a similar bottle, but this is anthracite for men. And this was released by Giacomo in 1991. Mark Buxton was the nose behind this fragrance. And what stands out as the most noteworthy characteristic here is the usage of pineapple. And we're talking um, 20 years before, say, Aventus. And we didn't really see pineapple very often in fragrance, but it occurred throughout the decades. And I think it's used to a great effect here. And I'm a bit ambivalent to the note in general, but I think because it is wedged with some of those 
characteristic uh, late 80s, early 90s Fougere type notes. Um, I like how it lends a certain quality to everything else surrounding it. Um, because you do have the herbs and the lavender and the conifers and um, a little bit of like even some florals in it. It's woody and musky, but the pineapple adds a little tang to it, a little je ne sais quoi to the whole affair. So this one isn't really discussed very much at all either. Um, I think that you can still purchase it for not a terrible uh, amount of money. And the bottle is pretty nifty too. If I may say so myself. It's good stuff. Um, that is Anthracite Bourdon from Giacomo. What is next? Okay. Oh, we have another gentleman's fragrance. This is Homme de Glais um, from Glais, uh, Parfums Glais, Paris. This uh, actually uh, was a relaunch in the 90s. There was an original version from the 60s, I believe, that ran for some time until maybe the early 80s. This relaunch uh, was in 1996. This stuff is, in my humble opinion, this is phenomenal. This is like a, a citrus shebra. Um, very cool bottle. And Gerard Anthony um, worked on this relaunch. There's lemon and basil, bergamot, pettigrain, very green in its opening, green er herbal, leafy, citrusy, but it is a shebra. So you get into some of these florals in the heart, some peachiness too, and the base is mossy, ambery, musky, great stuff. Um, I should do a proper review of this in the future. This does have um, a significant basil note in it. So if that is something to your liking, um, you should seek this out. In the near future, I'm going to be doing a whole week of basil um, fragrance fragrance reviews with for fragrances that prominently feature basil. Um, and those will be on Fragrantica slash base notes slash slash <laughs> Instagram. Um, but yeah, um, le thankfully, I think as of this time, these are still r relatively easy to spot, even though they've this has been discontinued for a while. This is an excellent one. Over there you go. Mm -hmm. From 1972, this is Courant from Helena Rubinstein. And this is another Shepra of the era of the liberated woman out of the kitchen and into the workforce. Put on your your slacks and your your finer uh, attire and uh, get into that office and show them who's boss. She can bring home the bacon and put it into a pan just like Anjali, which was a few years later, if anybody remembers that video. This is sort of in a similar vein. Great stuff, though. Um, still pretty easy enough to get. It's not very rare. Um, it doesn't come up often, but when it does, it isn't too costly. This is the Eau de Parfum Mist. Open up! <laughs> you gotta love those plastic atomizers that were really popular in the day. Yeah, this is great. Mossy, spicy, green, citrusy. The citruses are still pretty decent in here. They haven't turned. Lovely stuff. Helene Rubenstein. Helene? <laughs> Helena Rubenstein. Um, Corand is, is really great. Um, and there you have it. I don't know who the perfumer is. Um, I wasn't able to locate that information online. Okay, I think we have one more. Where is it? Ta-da! This is what I, I believe was the very first Ungaro fragrance marketed to the gents. And it would end up being one out of a trinity. You would have two and three that would follow. 
This was originally branded just as Ungaro Porlom, but as the second one was launched, they would start branding it with the Roman numeral one. Open up, open sesame. Oh, look at this. And in the back of it, it has the notes pyramid. Very helpful. Here's the box. Love that red. Very classy. This is an amber fougere. Um, this was actually a collaboration between the perfumer Jacques Pauge and Francois Damachy. And this is some smooth stuff. The cap isn't that smooth when removing it from the bottle, but I assure you the juice itself is quite smooth. It, it's like almost like wine like it's it's really wild um so there's like these there's pine needles uh, a lavender um there's a spiciness a geranium hell look at this is notes pyramid here i mean it says it all here lavender pine patchouli precious wood sandalwood wormwood geranium tonka amber honey Sounds like good stuff, right? Well, it is. And unfortunately, it is the rarest of the three. And I was fortunate enough to find this modest 30 milliliter bottle for about $90. So that's a good price. I wouldn't spend the $250 to $300 or more on the 3.3 um, milliliter, third, wait, 3.3 ounce or 100 milliliter bottles. Um, this would be for somebody who likes that same texture as Zeno Davidoff, but instead of the pooch, poo, <laughs> the poochuli, instead of the poochuli, this is more sandalwoody. And it's a lot more herbaceous. Another one that comes to mind would be um, the equally uh, sought after and long discontinued Free Life from Aigner. Um, they, this isn't too similar to either of those, but if you love that feel, that sort of dusky, herbaceous, coniferous, floral woodiness and sandalwood, uh, this would be the cat's pajamas for you. And uh, yeah, great stuff. Eau de toilette Ungaro Polom. Un. And I love the bottle. I mean, I love the box, rather. I look at the purple interior very very regal and then it just slides right into its case like that there you have it there's eight of them that i thought would be nice to share with you if you enjoyed this video please do subscribe click on the like button and hit the bell button so you can get notifications of future videos it's always a pleasure I appreciate all the support and the feedback, and I will see you again next time. Pip-pip.